Tonight, for your low-budget entertainment, we have the second film in Godzilla's long and illustrious career, Godzilla Raids Again. The Toho Motion Picture Company obviously wanted to cash in on the success of the original and didn't waste any time in doing so, as just five months after Godzilla's release, Godzilla Raids Again hits the big screens of Japan. This film begins the trend of the big G versus other giant creatures and continues the trend of smashing up cities. Osaka is the city that gets the lovely spanking this time, as Godzilla takes on a sort of spike back quadruped who goes by the name of Anglosaurus, who seems to be based on a Cretaceous period carnivorous stegosaur. But we all know that stegosaurs were plant eaters, don't we? But who needs correct historical data? Because after all, it's just two guys trashing a cardboard city dressed up in what the director of animation calls synchmation. Yes, I've seen better animated turds in socks. Oh, these reptiles are so cold. There's a notable difference in Godzilla's appearance on screen this time, due to one of three cameras used on a shoot being set at a different speed, which gave the fight scenes a more fluid animal appearance when cut together with the rest of the footage. And even Godzilla himself has a slightly altered image, with his new trim figure and more prominent teeth. But he has a less obvious parallel with the nuclear threat that he once stood for. <laughs> As in the first Godzilla film, there's a massive display of military might that proves woefully inadequate and impotent against the great beasts. Could this be an example of conventional weaponry proving useless against a new nuclear threat? I don't know, do I? Who do you think I am? Stephen fucking Hawking? Anyway, pretty soon the military have spunked all their weapons in a massive gung-ho display of machine gun masturbation, which leaves one pilot to say, Sayonara! and crash kamikaze style on the side of a hill, which inadvertently, or as it proves, vertically, shows all the other pilots how to dispatch and dispose of Godzilla! And in between swatting off military attacks like flies, the G-Star does battle with his new foe, the four-legged, spiny-backed Anguilus. Throughout the movie, our attention is directed to the plight of one family who are directly involved due to their fishery being squished and their ships sunk. But this only serves to slow the pace of the film down, and to be honest, the creatures are far more articulate. The finest moments of raids again are saved for the climactic battle, so it's well worth your while hanging around to the bitter end. Come on then, you bastard! Ah!